Hello, my friends. Today is day 17 of our countdown to Christmas. We're getting so close. And this book is very special. It's called Uncle Vova's Tree, and it's by Patricia Polacco. I hope you like it. Uncle Vova's Tree. During the Russian Orthodox calendar year, no holiday is more loved than Christmas Tide and Epiphany. As a child, I celebrated Christmas as most American children did, but at Epiphany in January, my brother, my two cousins, my grandparents and I would go to the farm of my great uncle Vladimir and Aunt Svetlana to celebrate in the Russian tradition. We wore dress from the homeland and relived the customs that originated from my family's roots. There is a wonder and a kind of magic that arises out of such dear memories. The passing of time only makes the moments more precious. So this is what the author wanted you to know about the story we're about to read. As we entered my uncle Vladimir's house, the sweet scent of evergreen filled our nostrils from the tree that lay on the parlor floor. The Christmas tree, my brother, my two cousins and I chirped. Indeed it is, Aunt Svetlana and Uncle Vladimir said as they both hugged and kissed us all. We children called my uncle Vladimir Vova, a small name for such a big and gentle man. And although he was quite old, Christmas was a time that made him young again. The wise icon seemed to look back at me from the corner of the parlor. Sheaves of wheat stood in a small bundle on the little table under it. For a good harvest, and so this house will never know hunger, Uncle Vova said. The kitchen was filled with glorious aromas of wonderful things that were being prepared for the coming feast later that day. My grandma and aunties were each making their own katya, a thick porridge of wheat or rice with honey, poppy seeds, raisins, and nuts. The aunties each came from a different part of Russia, so each of their recipes was different. They are all delicious, my grandpa would say, trying to keep peace. Later, we watched Uncle Vova and Aunt Svetlana dance around the brightly wrapped packages. He loved to dance with her and tell her how beautiful she was. I am so lucky to have stolen your heart so many years ago, he'd say. She would blush and say, oh, Volyodya. Then she'd giggle. After the dancing, he looked at his watch and said, isn't it time to be making paper stars? We raced to the kitchen table to make our stars out of colored paper. I got to hold the one that Uncle Vova made. While we were busy making our stars in the kitchen, my grandma Carl would, uh, went into the parlor and closed the big double doors. There she decorated the Christmas tree in secret. She lovingly took each ornament and hung it on the tree. She became a child again by remembering something warm about each and every one. Small bells rang softly, hearts danced about merrily, painted eggs graced the branches. When she finished, she smiled deeply, sighed, then slipped through the parlor doors and closed them so that we could not see the tree until after dinner. Uncle Vova had been watching us make our stars. When we were done, we looked at him with anticipation. He knew what we were waiting for him to say, but he teased us and made us wait ever so long. Finally, with a grand gesture, he took his watch from his pocket and announced, could it be time to take our paper stars? Then he paused and teased us even more. Out for a sleigh ride. Yippee, we all squealed. That was what we were waiting to hear. We raced to pull on our heavy wool coats, boots, and mufflers. Grandpa had been heating soapstones in the stove. He wrapped them in old wool blankets and took them out to the sleigh and then put them on the floor under burlap bags to keep us warm. We all marched up the hill with our stars. Squeak, squeak, squeak went our boots in the snow. Up the hill we went to where Grandpa held the sleigh. Uncle Vova clicked and gently tugged the reins and the sleigh swished smoothly down the hill. Billows of steam came out of the horse's nostrils with a soft puffing sound, and his hooves made a muffled clip-clop-clop as they met the new snow. We all sang songs, wonderful songs that echoed off the bark of the evergreens as we passed them. I wonder what the dinner table will look like, my cousins mused out loud. My thoughts trailed off back to the farmhouse. I love, or excuse me, I knew, but maybe she loved, that while we were gone, Grandma, Aunt Svetlana, and Aunt Katerina were busy laying the table for dinner, first with straw and hay to remember and honor the stable in Bethlehem. 
Over the straw, they would put a glistening white linen tablecloth and their best silver and finest china. On the sideboard would be cakes shaped like cupolas and rum baba, hard candies, and taffy. The dining room table would be transformed from that of a Midwestern farmhouse into a shimmering festival table deep in the heartland of Russia. As the sleigh finally drew into the driveway of the farmhouse, we circled the tall evergreen tree that stood in the middle of the driveway loop. When Svetlana and I arrived from our homeland, we planted this tree together to celebrate our own roots being put down into the new land, Uncle Vova said as we got out of the sleigh. We all went to the barn to get strings of berries and popcorn to put on the tree. We also hung small bags of suet and grain for the wild birds. For you, Uncle Vova said to the birds. The final touch was to hang the paper stars we had made onto the branches. Always remember to do this at Christmas, my darlings, even when I'm gone, Uncle Vova said quietly as the animals went to the tree. Volyodya, Aunt Svetlana called out from the window. You come now for dinner. We all ran into the house to wash for dinner. Katya was served from a giant tureen in the center of the table. Before we ate, Uncle Vova filled a bowl for those of the family who were no longer there. We remember, he said softly. Then he flung a spoonful of katya onto the ceiling. The number of grains of rice that stuck there prophesied the number of bees we could expect in the spring. This annoyed Aunt Svetlana, but she ended up laughing with the rest of us. Another spoonful was flung out the window. For Grandfather Frost, Uncle Vova said, here is a spoonful for thee. Please do not touch our crops. Then he said a blessing and the feast began. We children ate the katya so fast we almost choked. We were anxious to get to the bottom of the bowl for in one of them was a new silver dollar. Whoever got it had the best luck ever. Here it is, my brother's voice crowed. The rest of the feast was eaten more slowly and with great pleasure. When dinner was finished, Uncle Vova looked at the clock, then waited. He watched us lean forward in our seats, ready to burst with excitement. A mere nod from him meant we could open the parlor doors. Could it be that time already, he started to say. Then he paused for the longest time. Finally, he winked and nodded. We bolted from our seats and leapt toward the parlor. The first sight of the tree took our breath away. It shimmered with light of its own. Candles glowed on its branches. Small toys beckoned our touch. Sugar plums and candied ginger invited us to taste. The tree was with resplendent with painted eggs, peppermint hearts, and small ringing bells. Our eyes must have sparkled, for Uncle Vova took such pleasure in watching us. His merry eyes danced and twinkled as he heard each child scream and gasp with excitement as we opened our gifts. Such joy, such magic, he sighed as he leaned back in his old worn easy chair. This was to be a bittersweet memory, for that was the last Christmas Uncle Vova was with us. At the next Christmas dinner, a bowl of katya was placed in Uncle Vova's empty place. We all softly murmured, we remember. He would have wanted us to keep Christmas as always, Grandma said sadly. He would have wanted this house to be filled with laughter and good cheer, Aunt, Sle excuse me, Aunt Svetlana said softly. But it is so hard without him, Grandpa said. Suddenly, my brother jumped out of his seat and hollered, the tree, the tree, he screeched. We forgot to decorate Uncle Vova's tree. My brother, my cousins, and I started to pull on our overcoats and race outside to decorate the tree. Look, Aunt Svetlana called out as she pointed out the window. We all stood stunned at what we saw. A miracle, Katerina whispered. Not a sleigh's length from us, the animals were dressing Uncle Vova's tree. The birds were bringing berries and dropping them onto the snow-filled boughs. Geese, ducks, chickens, goats, and lambs moved silently toward the tree as if called there by an unheard voice. They were joined by wild animals from the forest nearby. There in the moonlight, with the stars flashing like diamonds, the tree shimmered in its own glowing light. It looked miraculous and wonderful. He is here, I said. I can feel Uncle Vova here now. 
This was a Christmas that blazes in my memory, for in the midst of our despair, we had felt only love with its center in Uncle Vova's tree. See, my sweeties, even when people can't be with you, they can be in your heart always. I love you very much. Bye for now.